Hi, everyone. It's my great pleasure to present our work. In this talk, I'm going to introduce a solution to reducing LT natural latency at the application layer. I'm Zhao Wei from UCLA. This is a joint work with my collaborators, Jing Hao, Yuan Jie, Yifei, and my advisor, Dr. Song Lu. Low latency is critical to many emerging applications, such as mobile VR, gaming, sensing. They all require low latency for proper functioning. These applications collect data from sensors and upload them to the cloud or edge servers for further processing, and the sensors typically produce small data periodically. These applications usually run on 4G LT networks that offer universal coverage and seamless mobility. LT has mobile access network with base stations that cover different areas and core network that manages the user state and connects the access network to the internet. A key challenge to serve these mobile applications is to meet their latency demand. This work aims at reducing LT access network latency, which is complementary to application-specific optimization and control plane latency reduction. In the access network, LT divides the channels to time frequency units called resource blocks, where base station and devices modulate their data. To reduce the latency, we attempt to answer three concrete questions. First, what are the latency elements? Second, how to reduce each of them? And third, is it possible for us to deliver an application layer solution without root privilege? Let's start with the first question, what are the roadblocks? We take a two-step approach. We first build a showcase mobile VR application. It uploads the user motion, basically your head movement, to the cloud server, which renders the video frames and streams them back to a headset. We collect logs from this VR application and one popular mobile gaming application, PUBG. We have logs that cover four operational networks for 10 months. After that, we use Mobile Insight to decompose the network latencies to elements and quantify them. To understand the behaviors, we also analyze 3GPP standards. With this methodology, we first find that when intuition is not correct, downlink is not the major latency bottleneck. Actually, more than 66% of the application network latency is from uplink. This is because 4G has sufficient bandwidth to support VR application with the adoption of new technologies such as MIMO, carrier aggregation, and deployment of 5G the throughput will be less and less problematic for mobile applications. As a result, our project focuses on the uplink latency. So why is uplink latency so high? The first element comes from DRX. To save power, the device switches between DRX on and DRX off. It only listens to the channels during DRX on. This is designed for downlink, so theoretically, it should not affect uplink. However, this is not the case. Instead, a device has to dose for a period before the packet turns the DRX to the on state. We call this DRX dose latency. The value is around 30 milliseconds on average for four operators. For applications with short interval, the previous packet might keep the next packet in the on state. This gives us an idea that we could wake up the device by sending some other packet in advance and make sure the data packet arrives during the DRX on period. The second latency element comes from scheduling. To send an uplink packet, a device first sends a scheduling request. It is an indicator that says, I've got data to send. The base station responds to it by returning grant. The grant tells the device which resource blocks it can use to send uplink data four milliseconds later. This latency from the SR to data is denoted as TSR grant. In addition, the device cannot send SR at any time. It has to wait for specific time slots. This waiting latency is denoted as TSR wait. We add both delays and call it scheduling latency. According to our study, this latency is more than 12 milliseconds on average. If we can prefetch the grant resource, the data might not need to wait for this latency anymore. We look at two other elements. First, when the grant from SR is not sufficient, the device will further send a request called BSR and gets another grant. This latency is called BSR latency. If the data transmission is corrupted, the device needs to retransmit the data. This incurs retransmission latency. However, both latencies are less than one millisecond on average. This is because the initial grant is usually sufficient for sensory small packets, and data corruption is rare for uplink packets due to their sizes. Since they are negligible, we don't optimize BSR or retransmission latency in our design. So we have identified two latency elements. 
how to reduce them then? We designed LLP. It has two component solutions to reduce DRX dose latency and scheduling latency. When you put those components together, there are conflicts. LLP resolves those conflicts and makes sure both latency elements are tackled. It finally infers all the critical parameters at the application layer without a root privilege. In this talk, we will focus on component solutions and application layer inference. For conflict resolution, please refer to our paper. To eliminate those latency, the core idea is to make sure the device is in DRX on when the data packet arrives. LLP achieves so by sending a router. It turns the device to on state, so when the real data packet arrives, it can directly proceed to the scheduling part. On the other hand, without LLP, device, a packet, needs to go through the dose period. One issue is if we send the router too early, it will incur unnecessary energy consumption. The solution is to accurately control the timing of the router. We derive the optimal timer and the regular traffic pattern makes it possible for us to send the routers properly. We next target scheduling latency. The core idea is to request for a grant to send uplink data before it arrives. LRP first sends a small packet called prefetcher. The device will send a scheduling request and gets a grant. The grant is not bound with the prefetcher. The data packet can be sent together with the prefetcher with the grant, as long as the grant has sufficient room for both packets. In contrast, a data packet in legacy LT network has to wait through the entire procedure, including SR, grant, and data transfer. LRP addresses two more issues in this part. First, an improper prefetcher might waste the resource or miss the opportunity for latency reduction. LLP enforces the proper timing that maximizes the probability for optimization. Second, if the grant is insufficient, the latency might not be reduced. However, we show that LLP still helps reduce latency in most cases and analyze the probability for the current cases. We finally address this issue, how we can infer those parameters at the application layer it is important to infer a few LT-specific parameters in our design at the application layer. Although it is possible to get them using tools like Mobile Insight, LT aims at, LRP aims at inferring them without root privilege. This is very challenging. It is very difficult just to single out the uplink network latency from the application layer. The idea of the solution is to use packet pairs. We carefully design the pairs so that their receiving interval is dominated by the parameters that we need. So we can use those measurement results to infer the parameters. I will show one example here. We send two packets together to the uplink buffer. One grant is not sufficient to carry both. So the first packet and a part of the second packet are sent together. Since the base station received the complete first packet, it immediately forwards the packet to the server. On the other hand, the second packet requires a second grant. After that, the base station has the complete second packet which is immediately forwarded to the server. The server can measure the interval to infer the latency from the request to the data transfer. An alternative solution is to send DNS requests. Instead of measuring the interval at a server, we measure the interval of their DNS responses. With this approach, we sacrifice a bit accuracy because downlink can further affect the packet interval, but we do not have to deploy a separate server. Our design is premised on that receiving interval is primarily affected by the uplink LT latency, while the core network and downlink only have relatively small impact on the packet pair interval. We have verified this in our real trace experiments. We also designed a few optimizations to improve the accuracy of the inference. LRP is very widely applicable. It can benefit 5G, still works when there's background traffic or packets are not strictly regular. It has little impact on network and other users. You could refer to our papers for detail. We implement LRP on Android as a user space demo. An, app, an Android application can use our APIs to reduce the latency. We evaluate LRP in operational networks. Our evaluation covers 375 cells from five operators in two countries. We test how LRP works with four different applications in different scenarios. From our experiments, LRP can significantly reduce the medium and 95th percentile network latency for all applications. The latency reduction is more obvious for localization and object detection as they suffer DRX dose latency more frequently. Here is a demo 
of mobile VR with and without LRT. When you run mobile VR in the legacy LT, the motion to frame latency is large. So when you make some head movements, the video frames are laggy. The experiments in the um, LRP is much better when it is enabled as this latency is being reduced. We also show that LRP can eliminate DRX dose latency, reduce scheduling latency, and has high accuracy for rootless inference in the micro benchmarks. With these improvements, LRP only generates small overhead, introduces small extra data, uh, small extra signaling messages, and marginal battery cost. We reduce LRP's overhead by carefully exploiting the timing control. LRP can also benefit 5G applications. We evaluate this on AT&T 5G networks. Since we don't have access to any tool that can collect 5G fine grain traces, we simply measure the RTT with and without LRP. The experiments show that LRP can achieve similar latency reduction numbers in 5G as those in 4G. To conclude, in this work, we unveil multiple latency elements in LT uplink that pose as roadblocks for latency sensitive applications. We design a solution LRP to reduce the latency for mobile applications without root privilege. Our evaluation shows that LRP works well for both 4G and 5G networks. This is a step towards low latency applications in 5G, 4G, and we hope there's more design for different applications that has requirements for low latency. We have realized the data, we have released the data and source code. You could visit our website or scan this QR code for more details. Thank you very much.